We recorded this episode soon after we walked a labyrinth. In the episode, we discuss our experience. After we recorded the episode, we distilled our observations into five messages about the spiritual journey. And although we touch on them in this audio, you'll find a much more organized presentation of these five messages about the spiritual journey from the labyrinth in our podcast blog. The link is always in the show notes. I'm Sienna. And I'm Toast. We're partners in love, life, and music. And we've been together since 2001. With each episode of this podcast, our goal is to help our fellow LGBT community members lift their lives to the next level. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Before we dive in, we have a review from the community. Yay. Yay. Thank you so much to <sighs> Gone Hiking. Gone Hiking. A creative handle with the exclamation mark for one of the eyes in hiking. <laughs> Thank you so much. Gone Hiking left a review for the podcast on iTunes and it's titled Lovely Podcast. Sienna and Toast are sweet and engaging while they discuss various topics from gender, soul care, to pidgin English. The <laughs> podcast is down to earth and relatable. Highly recommend. Thank you so much, Gone Hiking. And please message us, email us, and let us know if you'd like a little goodie sent your way. We would love to send something your way. And, you know, we just want to let you folks know that if you have left a review, if you've thought of leaving a review, please do it because, <laughs> because our goal for the podcast is really to get the podcast out there to more people that it could help. We just want to edify lives yeah, as much as we may be able to in we our lives. To, you know, we want to be on the journey with you. Everybody wants to make a difference. So let's Including journey us. together. Let's learn together and explore together and create amazing lives. That's what I want to do. And in increase the, the goodness in the world. Yes. 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 Because it takes individual lives getting better for the whole world to get better. So let's do this. Damn it. <laughs> all right all right you know okay. what i mean no yeah I right? do. everybody I do. knows everybody knows you know what here is okay my favorite phrase here's the thing we need each other and Amen, so the sister. sooner we find each other and one mode is finding each other through the podcast right mm -hmm. right we can then create and set up community Support each other. To support each other, to mm -hmm. feel less alone, to mm -hmm. know that, hey, I'm journeying with all these people. Mm -hmm. We're all here speaking a similar language in how to create a life we love. And we're all doing it. That's and right. And we can pull each other up when someone's down. That's right. We, someone else can pull us up mm -hmm. when they're doing exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. And we're all leading by example. And I right. think that... And we can all be oh. real with each other. Yes. It's not all lollipops and rainbows and unicorns all the time. Right? Let's be real. Right. But exactly. we're not going to be Debbie Downers either. Exactly. We're all just so doing our best. Man. Yes. And, you know, so we weren't even planning to. I know. Talk what about is this, this turning into? I don't know. It's sermon a whole over here. <laughs> changing topic here. But we want to say that for any of you who signed up to be on the wait list for Life Club, that is absolutely happening. And we will speak more to it by sending out an email. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what that's turned into is we are actually going to be launching a 90-day course in October or early November. <laughs> Depends. I'm actually looking We're taking at, the steps. We're I'm taking actually the looking steps. at the moon cycle and astrology to help inform when we actually launch. In so harmony it's, act, it's going to be later in October or early in November, but not beyond November 7th. That's what I can absolutely tell you. So we are actually going to launch that course first, followed by the membership, because the course really is the answer to a lot of the messages that have been coming in. 
early on in the podcast, we put out a call to all of you saying, hey, you know, what are you struggling with? What are you working on now? What would you what do you need the most help in? And we found that, you know what, it's this course. So, so much more to come about the course. But we just want to let you all know that Things are, are doing. This, things are simmering. Things are brewing. Things are cooking we, back there. And we are doing this podcast because we love doing the podcast, but we also want to help and share all this amazing stuff that we've learned with as many people that are out there that want to learn it. So Because it's helped us so much. Yes. And it's given it's, Sienna oh and my gosh, I. It's it has given, helped us yeah, so much, you guys. It's given Sienna and I a really nice common ground mm-hmm. about spiritual principles, and the common things that we mm-hmm. we both share. Because yeah. as much as she and I get along, and as much as she and I share a spiritual point of view, we also, because we of our masculine and feminine souls, I would say, have little nuances. Mm-hmm. Little nuances that different. are different. Yeah. yeah. And, and whereas in the past, those nuances we would allow to blow up into conflicts between the two of us as individuals we've come to realize oh okay you know what it is you have a feminine aesthetic i have a masculine aesthetic when it comes to our spirituality yeah but this particular 90-day course that we experienced years ago really helped us to see okay this is is the the common common ground. ground yeah and it's also really what we found to be the very basic basic tools that never go away they're evergreen these are the things that always come back to you know we can branch off into learning this branch off into learning that other thing but this is the foundation you'll never go wrong with the basics so we we weren't we didn't know where this course fit in but now we realize this has to come out first so we're going to be launching with this first followed up by life club so anyone on our mailing list will hear about it And if you're not on our mailing list, please sign up. But anyways, all of that having to do with, please leave a review. It's so important because it helps us find each other and connect with each other and really go, hey, this is my community here. And this is what we want to do, establish a community that everyone can really feel safe in. So so thank you for leaving the review. Gone hiking. And please contact us. Hiking. (laughs) Contact us and let us know... um, If you would like us to send you a little surprise, because we would love to do that. Wow, we're talking fast in this episode. We are, and I just took another sip. (laughs) It's the coffee. (laughs) (laughs) All right. right. Yeah, I guess that was pretty fast. Yeah. You know what it is? It's excitement, because we are so excited to launch the course. Yeah. That's what I can say. All right. Okay, so why don't we tell them about the grotto yes because this is kind of what prompted the topic for this episode well see it yeah what Hmm? huh (laughs) what What? you mean the last episode no this episode oh well and the last one too i guess right yeah the roses one yeah Yeah. catholic well the if you joined us for the last episode you'll know that we talked about a miracle that i experienced in seventh grade where roses magically appeared and This week, we are speaking about our experience at the Grotto in Portland, which I really think they should have had this saint somewhere. This saint, little flower. Mm. No, they didn't. But they did have uh, St. Francis of Assisi. Of course, yes. Who is my man because he loves all (laughs) the animals. Yes, he loves all the animals. So anyways, the Grotto, you want to tell them a little bit about the Grotto? Okay. Very briefly. Yeah. So apparently the grotto in Portland is associated with some kind of Catholic servite order. Yeah. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. This episode is going to be really interesting for the pronunciation because we have another French word coming up. Yeah. That's going to be really entertaining to try and hear us pronounce it. Oh, there's bear. So what is it? Servite? I think so. Or is it servite? I don't know. Like I don't know. Cr- like crudites we're not, or crudite? Yeah, we're not <laughs> crudites and so crates. <laughs> Anyways, we went to the grotto. 
And, <laughs> and first of all, it's beautiful there. So if you have a chance to go to the grotto in Portland, go. Because you you park your car and you are just, as soon as you even drive into the parking lot, you're just greeted by immense trees, like many places in Portland. But it was just breathtaking. And for sure, if you are Catholic, you must go there. You must go there if you're Catholic. But even if you're not, you will find so much to appreciate there because as a, you know, recovering Catholic person, as soon as I got onto the grounds and I passed the beautiful trees, I did have this this feeling come over this me. This clenching like, feeling. <gasps> yeah, I felt I felt a little stifled, this mm. um, boxed in feeling <laughs> and I my breath got shallow and I'm like, <laughs> what gosh. is going on? But it's just it's just so neat it's how the our Catholic bodies, trauma. It is like oh, I God. think it's it's amazing what our bodies hold, mm, our yeah. actual physical bodies, what they hold, yeah. and the memories they have. And I feel like seeing the statues and, you know, I just started to feel the guilt and all this, the more 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 of the negative aspects of my Catholic memories mm-hmm. and impressions. But about a third in, I really could step into what I have come to embrace and keep with me about my Catholic upbringing, which has a lot to do with the reverence and the beauty mm-hmm. and the, um, the ceremony and the ritual and the ornate structures. You know, it's so beautiful, really, in one way. And so mm-hmm. I, about a third in, I was, so, I was okay. I could breathe again. <laughs> I could definitely breathe again. <laughs> but the, so we'll include a link to the grotto yeah. in the show notes on yes. our blog. Yes. Um, but the grotto is a national Catholic shrine. Yeah, um, it's um, beautiful. The grounds of, I don't know how many acres, but it was a really large place, beautifully maintained gardens. Uh, yeah. And it turns out that Servite Friars is something about like the order of friar servants of Mary. The hmm. order of servants of Mary, also known as the Servites. And somebody, I'm sure, if somebody knows if we're pronouncing it wrong, let us know. Yeah, it's so amazing, huh? How old some of the stuff is. Like, it's just, you cannot even... Yeah, founded in the early part of the 13th century. Specifically in 1233. That's so crazy. Like, I can't even take that in. Yeah. But anyway, so that's where we went. And one of the highlights of going to the grotto was... The labyrinth. the labyrinth. They have a replica, right? Yes. Of a labyrinth that is famous. And the original labyrinth Tell them toast. is in France. And it's <laughs> in a cathedral <laughs> that's <laughs> pronounced. How is it pronounced? Chartres. How's Very, that? I think that, that was okay? excellent. Yes. Yeah, for any, any French speakers out there. Oh, my gosh. We can ask Catherine. Oh, that's right. Did Catherine we say that? Our, our friend who Shots. she's our Shots. friend is pretty neat because Cathedral. she's she's Chinese, speaks Chinese, but was born and raised in France. So, so she, she also speaks French. So she's trilingual people. Yeah. Awesome. We can ask her. I think you did great. I think she would well, give you, you like an A minus. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, so this beautiful sacred geometry pattern, this labyrinth, was on the floor of a cathedral there that was built, actually it was rebuilt in 1200 after the fire. Yeah, so, in, yeah, so this, this shot cathedral <laughs> was constructed between 1194 That's crazy. and 1220. Yeah. It is oh a goodness. World Heritage Site, according to the United Nations. Uh, yeah, pretty nuts. So if any of you live in San Francisco, one of my first experiences with the labyrinth. So the labyrinth is something that was very near and dear to me, and I'm coming to reclaim and remember that part of myself that just embraced this beautiful sacred structure, sacred geometry, and I'm so glad it's at the grotto now that we know of that. Um, 
But the first time I experienced it was in San Francisco at the Grace Cathedral. So if you want to experience a labyrinth and you live in San Fran or Northern California, go check it out at the Grace Cathedral because they have a another replica of the labyrinth there that they you pro- can walk. And they probably inside. have many throughout. Oh, all, you know what? Right? Wherever you live, actually, I am sure you can they find some one. Just kind of Google it. Yeah. yeah. So, but what was special? So special about the Grace Cathedral is that they have an indoor labyrinth, but they also have a smaller outdoor labyrinth. Mm. So anyways, I'm like talking so much, so I'm going to take a moment to calm down. Okay. Why don't you take it from well, here? hi, Bear. Bear has entered Our the room. Bear has joined us. He's an right. expert. We got to tell them about it. Uh, we got to tell them about his Halloween costume. But why don't you talk about your experience oh, with the Halloween labyrinth? Because that was your first time walking the labyrinth. Yes. So the labyrinth is meant to be used as a meditation device. And you are meant to basically walk the one path that winds and curves and turns in on itself. And eventually, as long as you follow it, it leads you to the center of this design that's just on the ground. And... When you're in the center, you take some time for still meditation. And then when you're ready, you walk back out following that same exact path. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I definitely did have some moments during the course of that walk where it, I did have that sensation that I sometimes will get when I'm meditating, which is a feeling of eternity Mm. of being not not in linear time anymore mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. what i mean where you feel like kind of you're in vertical time somehow yeah. like you're between dimensions or something yeah i don't know no i know so that mean. was really cool so that was really cool um but the other the other experience i had with the labyrinth that felt really neat was a sensation of being just trusting that as long as I keep following this one path in front of me, I'll eventually get to the destination, yes. which is the center. Yes. And along the way, as I'm taking the next step on this one path, because it's not like a maze where you have any choice, <laughs> you just, there's, it's just one path, right? You just follow, follow it. And as you are following it, on your way to the center, you're winding all over the place. Like you're you're winding, and you mm-hmm. you double back on yourself. And there are some points where you walk all along the edge of it, and, and you're on the other long, side of it. Yeah, this it's this long walk, and then and then you do a switch back, and then you do another switch back, and, and then you're just hanging out in like it's seemingly hanging out in like one quadrant of the labyrinth, right. And then you end up way on the other side of the labyrinth at other times. So the sensation as you're doing this walk is, I don't know, what the heck? Where Where, am I going? Where the heck I am in this design that's on the ground. I don't know where I am in it. beautiful design. I'm just following the next step. I'm just taking the next step. But there's a really reassuring feeling because even though in one way, you don't know where you are in the design in another way at the same exact time you have complete confidence yes. that you're on the right path mm-hmm. because there's only one path <laughs> and that's you what just yes and that's just why it's so powerful taking the step then yes. you're fine and that's what's so powerful it's kind of like being able to be on an adventure. It's kind of like a roller coaster in a way. And okay, okay, no, I don't think it's that. Like but <laughs> <laughs> because you get to have the best of both worlds. And what I mean is you get to have the world of ooh, adventure of like, ooh, I don't know what's going to happen next. I don't know where this is going to lead me in the next moment. Mm. Like, is, is, is the path going to turn in the next five steps or ten steps or not? I don't know. 
So you have that sense of novelty and adventure and the unknown. But at the same exact time, you have the security of being certain that you know where it's all headed. Mm. I think Tony Robbins talks about some of some of the human needs being the need for uncertainty and the need for certainty. Yes. Right? Yes. So the sensation of walking this labyrinth was, yeah, I get to have both. Which was that's really true. cool. Yeah. I thought it was I really think that's cool. why it's so powerful, too. I think that's one reason, yeah. You know, and considering that if you do use it like a walking meditation mm-hmm. and you go in there with an intention. Mm-hmm. So I know one way they've, they've uh, recommended using it is you, before you enter, you have an intention before you step, before you even step into okay. the entry point. Mm-hmm. You have an intention and if something is bothering you or you have a question, you have that question in your mind. And then as you walk the labyrinth and you get to the center Mm-hmm. then you will come to more of your answer. And you, then you when receive, you... Like you should expect to receive. Some yes, kind that's of, more of the receiving, okay. the receiving place, that middle. Mm-hmm. And then you walk out contemplating the, you know, really... Integrating. Yeah, integrating. It. Yeah, it's more integrating than contemplating, but integrating the information you received. Mm-hmm. And then you walk out. Mm-hmm. And I love that. And they say that, how you walk the labyrinth is how you walk in life. So what was so funny is that <laughs> while Toast and I were walking the labyrinth, there were some people there, and they're running it, <laughs> <laughs> and then racing each other, and they seemed like they were having fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's a way that, you know, that's how they're seeing their right. life, right? Having a lot of fun doing this <laughs> thing. and But... Um, but yeah, so with that experience, we, we knew we wanted to share our experience with the grotto and, and having walked the labyrinth at this grotto and just feeling such a shift having done it. We were like, yeah, wow, this is just like life in the sense of we are really being called to trust the process of life. Mm-hmm. You know, we we don't see, and it, it even reminds me of the podcast we did on... Um, all this are better yet still, you know, not even being able to see the whole terrain, right? right? But still having an openness that even if something in the path doesn't happen the way we would like it to happen, to just remain open that we don't see the whole terrain. Mm-hmm. And there's another energy that we are co-creating with that does see the whole terrain. Mm-hmm. Right. But to trust the path and to keep going, because if we don't trust the path and I know just stay stuck, then we can get stuck and then we second guess and then we don't know, oh, my gosh, should I turn around and go back out? Should I you know, what should I do? And what we're here to say is that if you just keep trusting and take a step and do what you can with what you have exactly where you are and take that next step more of the path will be revealed to you i'm sorry i'm just taking that in i'm letting i'm letting it be <laughs> quiet like, <laughs> and just silently agreeing because i think our human nature mm-hmm. wants to know the whole plan we want to know yes. exactly where we're going, right. what we're doing. We I think want the recipe. Not everyone, but most of us. Yeah. I think most of us lean in that direction. We want the whole story, exactly every turn, every twist, all of it. We want to know and we want to be prepared as humans, mm-hmm. as human beings. But I think we have to remember that before we were human, we were spiritual beings, and we still are spiritual beings. Mm-hmm. And that part of us calls us to trust the process, that we're not going to know all of it, you know, but that we are working with a part of ourselves that does know. Right. And that's so much, right? That's so, <laughs> that's so much. But basically, if we trust the process and take small steps every single day in the direction that we want to move towards, more will be revealed. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that, 
okay, this path will just be great and straight and you know smooth and sailing all the so time. Easy and there are going to be unicorns, right? There are going to be twists and turns like the labyrinth shows us. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we are hanging out in one quadrant. Sometimes we're way on the other side, and we don't know when those things happen. But if we can greet each step of the way with an openness and a trust, we know that this path will eventually lead us to what we are visioning. Mm -hmm. And even more. And what we're being called to do. And even more. What we're being called to do, how we're being called to serve, who we're called to be in this lifetime. You know? Yeah. What do you have? Yeah. It, okay, so two two thoughts come to I mind see as your you mind share that. Going and going. Do you see it? Do you see I do. It? I feel Arr, it. I need some WD forty in there. So two things come to mind. First is how, yeah, it's there's something about the culture of the I guess the scientific revolution and this technology and three million Google results in two seconds kind of thing, where we just want the recipe. Yeah, we want the hacks. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. want the shortcuts. Shortcuts, right? Yeah, we want the results, and we want it to be predictable. Mm-hmm. And everybody's trying to make a forecast, and we. So that's that part of us that wants to see the entire picture, picture. Mm-hmm. before we'll even take the first step. Right. Like we wish we had that. Yes, <laughs> everybody. We wish we had that. Um, and it, and so it feels scary in one way to not have that. But the second thought is that if you see life and the world being quote unquote perfect and it's perfect for process, that's what it's perfect for, right? It's perfect for relationships. That's what it's perfect for. And if you see your life as at its essence, it's your relationship with the divine, whether mm-hmm. you whether you see that as the greater part of yourself or the great mystery or the force of life yeah. right at, at its essence your life is your experience of of that if you are given the entire picture and exactly how everything's going to work out right from the beginning then that precludes a need for a relationship with the divine right because it's like, oh, you gave me the instructions from A to Z. Thanks. Okay, I got it. Right. And you're just going to go and do it. Right. But but that's not life. Yeah, but that's not life. And I right. think the reason that's not life is because that's not the point of life. Right. The point of life is to stay in relationship with each other, with the divine. Yeah. Right. We are relational beings. Because we're not just human beings. And even as human beings, we're relational beings. We exist in relationship. Yeah. yeah so it's all about But it's more, but it's, but it's the, but it's the spiritual relationship mm-hmm. that I feel like as human beings, we forget as we get older. I feel like when we're, when we come into this world, I feel like we're so in touch with that world because we just came from it, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Then we, be, then we're human, then we're a baby. Mm-hmm. And then we lose that essence. We lose that connection. We get, we cut ourselves off. Right. We learn like there's that, me and then there's you. Right. Right. We, we learn that separate separation. ourselves, the separation yeah. on, on that very intimate level. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think part of life is remembering to be whole again, bringing ourselves Absolutely. whole again which is that direct communication and relationship with the divine, which part of having that relationship is trusting this process of not knowing, Mm -hmm. not knowing everything, Mm -hmm. not seeing everything. And just like what you said earlier with Tony Robbins talking about the known and the unknown. Well, this is the unknown part. (laughs) Right. Right. And how we need that. And even some in some of your writings, when you're talking about our need for mystery. Mm -hmm. Right. This is the mystery. Right. And to embrace right. the mystery. Yes. And to love the mystery. To embrace and it because which, life would which, really be pretty boring. Which is to trust the mystery. Yes. yes. Trust it. Just don't. Yes. So we really want to say like. There's a beauty uh, in that. Yes. And don't like mm. as much as it's so seductive to get stuck. <laughs> what do you mean seductive to get stuck? Like because we can because. 
when we say, oh, I don't know what to do, I'm stuck, okay. or oh, I'm scared, mm-hmm. I don't know which way to, mm-hmm. oh, I don't even know what to do next, and how do I, you know, and what what's going to happen next week? I don't know what's going to happen next week. It's so seductive to stay in that cycle, and I think the reason is because it kind of pats down the fear a bit. You know what I mean? It because you're able to live, not to act. Because you're able to li- Because you tell yourself, I can live under the illusion that if I do nothing, then nothing's going to happen. Everything will remain the same. Yes. And that is an illusion. That feels safe because it's a known quantity. Right. Yeah. But start getting comfortable not knowing. That's one thing. And get comfortable. Maybe this is first and foremost. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. (laughs) Right? Start to embrace being uncomfortable and knowing that when you're uncomfortable, you're really growing. Mm -hmm. You're at that edge of growing. And I'm not talking about the discomfort, that intuitive discomfort where you're somewhere and you kind of get the heaves. Like I'm not (laughs) talking about that. Yeah. That that's an intuition. That's a primal thing. So pay attention to that. I'm talking about just when you, the fears that come up when you're scared to take action on something when, you know, you'd rather stay paralyzed because it feels safer. Even though you know deep down inside that it's slowly killing you. Yes. Because here's, here's what I know I've, I've experienced. And actually, Toast, I know you've experienced this too. So, you know. So there. Jump in. Yeah. Um <laughs> That was a long pause. I was thinking that's why I was just like, you totally cracked yourself thinking. up. <laughs> okay. okay. So what I was going to say is that I know that I've been in situations where I've been uncomfortable and I'm like, hey, this isn't aligned with who I know I meant to be. Okay. And this isn't aligned with my own personal values. Okay. But mm-hmm. I'm too scared to change the situation. Okay. Okay. Yep. So I stay in it. And what I found is that the longer I stayed in those situations, the more the discomfort became comfortable. Mm, and I was mm, able mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. disguise the originating discomfort. Like, oh, no, it's not so bad. Yeah. Right? Just yeah, talk I myself into mean. it. Yep. And it's like, it's so funny. We're so afraid to make the changes. Because of not knowing yep. the full picture, yeah, you know, not mm-hmm. trusting mm-hmm. this process. Mm-hmm. I'm so guilty of that. Yeah. You know, I, know I can even mean. think of something right now that I'm sitting on. And I know you know what it is, Toast, but I'm sitting Uh-oh. on it. I don't know what it is. I'm sitting Uh-oh. on it. And so, you know, I've made strides in other areas. We've both made strides in so many different areas. Mm-hmm. But I know for me, there's an area that I'm like, okay, I got to change this. See, and that siren... That's a siren is a sign. It's a sign. Okay, we got to wrap this episode up. And (laughs) so anyways, get on it. So trust the process. Do what you can with what you have where you're at. Just go as far as the light that you are seeing shows you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And, and more stay, will be and revealed. Keep, and keep staying in touch and keep looking, right? Keep watching Pay the path attention. in front of you. Yeah, yes. it's, I, think that's, I think that's where life is driving all of us is it's forcing us to say, hey, man, you got to keep paying attention to yeah. what your heart's telling you, to what your yep. soul's longing is telling you. That, because that's how you'll know what the next step is. You yes. just have to keep paying attention yes. and reaching out and listening, listening and asking and staying in relationship with life. Yeah, the life force. Okay, that was our that was our sermon to ourselves. Okay. Yes. Okay, ready to take the next step. All right. Here we go. Yay. So thanks for listening everybody. We hope this helped encourage you. And if you feel so inclined and have the time, we would love if you would leave a review for this podcast on we iTunes. We would so love that. <sighs> We're watching. We we check our reviews every now and then. And when a new one pops up, we're like, hey, look at this. Okay, so much appreciation. Check the show notes so you can sign up on our email list. 
And until next time, this is Sienna. And this is Toast telling you to love life, live free.